Today I'm going to be sharing with you a witchy vlog. Over the weekend I'm going to be engaging in some practices. I've got some things I need to make and some things I need to get done and sort out. So I'm just going to invite you to come along and join me for today's video. So get yourself a nice hot drink, settle back, relax and enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all well and safe and looking after yourselves. I am really excited to share this video because it's been a really long time since I've vlogged in this way and I'm just really excited for it. I've got some oils that I want to make and prepare. I am re doing some house protection, charms and wards, as well as just generally cleansing. I've done the mundane cleansing already and I do tend to like to do this every week and whilst I love more eco-friendly or homemade remedy like sprays with vinegar and lemon and ginger and herbs and such I do feel like whilst they have like a spiritual resonance they do tend to leave that residual smell of the vinegar which I don't love and I also feel like for my bathrooms and stuff I really do need good real cleaners you know so I try to get the ones that have less toxins in them but I do tend to like to use real cleaners for doing real jobs around my house but that's not to say that there isn't a place for those more folksy home remedy recipes in my home cleansing because there is. You may have seen in my magical cleansing video from last year and the cleansing altar wash video as well as some reels on Instagram that I do tend to do this especially for my altars I do make batches of like a specific wash and I often incorporate different herbs I'm working with at the time or that feel right to me at that moment as well as some vinegar and some lemon juice usually and sometimes I throw in a little bit of rum as like a kind of offering and a nod towards bringing in blessings and I like to wash my altars with that and just to cleanse and purify the space before I recharge it and yeah set it up again for what I'm going to be working on so that's really nice to do but I have done the mundane cleansing already but I am going to be doing some more magical cleansing as well as redoing some of those protection charms etc wards and making some oils and such so do grab a drink if you haven't already and settle back and enjoy so first of all I have this horseshoe which I have enchanted and I placed just above the door at our front door and I've used a folk charm from The Wicked Shell Decay by A.D. Mercer. This is a broom I have stood up. It obviously doesn't have the handle but it is a broom that I enchanted for protective measures at the front door. I also have a selenite candle holder there. I have a blessing bowl with some salt and rose petals and other herbs there and then obviously there's the Sata Square behind. I also have the begonia there which is also enchanted for blessings and, and a lovely candle that I have and there's also a little tree that my dad carved and then this is a little fairy house that I made with my kids when we went to a museum exhibition and there was this fantastic workshop that we booked in to create our own little fairy houses in and I just love it and there are some crystals there, there's some moss agate and there is some blue lace agate as well that I've made a little offering and I enchanted that as well so that it was open for fairies and spirits to reside in, fairies and spirits that are going to bless our home. So I wanted to also refill those blessing bowls so that is part of the plan today as well. Uh, now I'm up in my witchy space. This is actually the spare room. Essentially now I am just going to gather the things I need together and I am going to get started making some oils. So I'm starting by cleansing my space and I'm using some rosemary here but I also like to use some cedar sometimes and I use garden sage as well. So I just wrap these little bundles myself and I'm just cleansing my space, I'm cleansing myself and I'm cleansing all of the items that I'm gonna be using as well for making oils. The first oil I want to make is a protection oil and I'm just taking a look in the Book of Shadows that I started to create. This is like a formulary 
book that I wanted to create and this book I want it to look pretty so it takes time to make the pages how I want and to write it how I want and to paint and draw in the book because that's how I want it to be but a lot of my recipes have just been written down in some of my more journaly book of shadows because I do have quite a few for different things and I tend to just jot them down with whichever journal that I'm using at the time and some oils and formulas are also in my notes on my phone so things are in different places and sometimes in bits of paper and I have this huge ring binder of loose papers with recipes and spells and rituals written all over it so I haven't sort of put them all in one book I also have a larger book where I put certain rituals and things like that but again that's quite pretty and I do a lot of channeled art in that book as well but I haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of art recently and I used to do a lot more art when I was younger and I didn't have kids so it's hard to find the time to fit it in but anyway at the moment I'm just deciding what I want to put in my protection oil because I basically want it to be a really fiery wall of protection and I want it also to have trip wires within it which will reflect back and send back any negative intentions or evil eye towards me back to that person. So it's not just protection in a general sense, but it's actually quite a, some might say baneful, protective oil. And so I'm choosing my ingredients for this reason. And that's one of the reasons why I also grabbed out the Poison Path Herbal by Kobe Michael, because there are some other herbs mentioned within that book that are not poisons, but they are considered sort of more malefic of influence or more baneful. And I was going back over some notes that I made in that book when I read it last year. I think it was January last year, or it could have been the December of the year before. So I spent some time in my more journaling notebook, which you can see it's the black one above formulary, more pretty book. And I spent some time just jotting down notes and writing out the ingredients that I wanted to include. And some of the herbs I have doubled up with the essential oil as well. I'm just taking a look at part of my store cupboard basically. So I've got a lot of un boxed unopened herbs in there. I've also got a lot of incenses, herbal blends, some that are homemade and some that have been purchased. I've got a lot of candles stored as well as lots of bits and bobs and tools and things that I use and some more baneful items that I don't tend to use that frequently but that are really handy to have. So obviously as well you're probably going to notice that I'm being quite casual in the way that I'm narrating over this b-roll and the reason for it was basically because I felt it'd be really nice just to see a witch working in their space and actually you know get to understand how long some of these things take. I can spend a whole afternoon hours and hours making oils and I really enjoy the process but I often don't have that much time to dedicate to it so I try and make as much as possible without it going bad you know not too much but maybe enough for a few batches so it lasts me maybe six months or up to nine months and so I use uh, sweet almond oil when I'm making my oils and that's just a personal choice because that's what I grew up with that's what my mum used when she used essential oils and so it's just something that I do but you can use jojoba oil avocado oil olive oil is so perfect for a lot of love work and money workings and also protection workings as well. Olive oil is fantastic. Sometimes I also, if, if something is really, really baneful or malefic, I sometimes choose to use rapeseed oil or sunflower oil. I just pick intuitively a lot, but generally I tend to make my oils with almond oil and it's also it's a good oil for the skin as well. It's not ideal for the face. Jehova would be a better choice for the face but I am definitely waffling now. Hopefully you might enjoy this style so let me know if you do enjoy this kind of more casual relaxed style. Obviously I've got a lot of jars here these are all just old jars I've kept and saved washed out and then you know used them for storing herbs. I am just making an offering to the root it's an angelica root. This offering is to awaken the root so I'm also making this 
prayer petition to the root to awaken it and to imbue it with its intention and petition it to work with me in this working. I'm doing that first. That's something that I learned from reading various Kunja books. So it obviously has its influence, but I do think that it's actually really, really supported any work that I've done when I've used roots. So I continue to do that. So the offering is just a bit of rum as well as prayers. Some other herbs and ingredients that I'm including in this oil include some agrimony and this is for a returning influence and a defense. My notes sort of went over what I was considering slippery elm to protect from gossip and to protect my identity as well. So filming this took quite a long time because every step of the way I was imbuing my intention into each item and yeah quite a long process so I'm not going to show all of it but I will share with you what I included. So I included agrimony, I also included the angelica root after I had made the offering of the rum to the root and it had soaked for a good 15 minutes or so as I was preparing. I have a protection salt blend as well that I made myself a few years ago. I couldn't tell you what's in it, it's written down somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely got some black pepper in it and salt and some herbs, so protective herbs that are part of my salt blend. Then I included three rowan berries. I also included patchouli leaves, vervain for a kind of motherly sort of protection, rue, of course, black pepper, lavender flowers, and that's for more of a, a domination kind of aspect so that I feel empowered. Then the slippery elm bark that I talked about and some frankincense as well as a bay leaf, cinnamon stick, some dragon's blood, some rosemary, I consider that to be really ancestral, so I always call to my ancestors to support me with the work when I work with rosemary. I also included some essential oils, and those were clary sage, and cinnamon, lavender, frankincense, and patchouli. And I had differing amounts of the drops that I used for each. I used less lavender and frankincense and patchouli than the clary sage and the cinnamon. Obviously the cinnamon in can be an irritant for some on their skin, so that's something that I have noticed I've felt a little bit irritated before when I've used too much, but I think that this is like fine, this amount, because I've experimented with it. I know that this is okay for my skin, but it's, it might be something that you want to leave out of yours. Also, just to note that I worked out how many millilitres of almond oil I would need in this oil before I you know, poured it over my herbs. And I made sure that when I added the essential oils, I only added the correct dilution. And this is really important when you're working with essential oils because they shouldn't be applied neat to the skin. And I've talked about essential oils and aromatherapy on my channel before. I really do need to do a dedicated video. It's really, really important, but essentially, I have just over 100 milliliters here, and with that, I would go no more than about 20 drops of any essential oils. So that is kind of the max that I would go, and I would use even less if it was for a facial or a body oil. So now I'm getting to the fun part because I'm using a formulation that I created a long time ago, and I've improved it. A number of times like over the years I've improved it and got it to a place where it feels more and more potent and so this is a love oil essentially and it can be used in a number of ways and I have certain ways I like to use it I like to use it on my hair it is a glamour as well as self-love oil and so I use this almost daily to be honest with you and I love these little bottles from Neil's Yard. I always recycle them. So again, just going over with my rosemary and I am just cleansing everything. I have my candles, I have my incense. This is one of the formulas that I have in my book. So I drew my little bottle and I have a botanical print of a rose in there and then just some information about the ingredients I've included and the amounts of 
each herb and essential oil. So this is a page that I worked on for a while and I really was proud of it. So it's because it's one of my favorite oils to make and it's one of my favorite oils to work with and use in my practice. So for this oil, I'm not gonna detail every single herb that I use because there is a personal intention with this oil, but I will share some of the herbs. They are patchouli and cinnamon, hibiscus, amber, resin, jasmine flowers, rose, petals, lavender, and damiana. And I really like to spend time with each herb and awaken the herb. So I do speak to the spirit of the herb, the plant spirit, and connect in with it and ask it to work with me within the oil, if it will. And I really, really love this whole process. I love it so much. And then in terms of essential oils, for this oil, I obviously included rose, again, some jasmine, some vanilla, and some vitamin E oil, which is really lovely for the skin, and some patchouli. And then there are a couple of other essential oils that are a little bit special that I add that I'm not going to detail. And personally, I do feel that this blend is really potent for me because some of those additional herbs and essential oils that I'm not mentioning here in the description are meaningful for me. I work with them and they have resonance and significance for me and that is not gonna be the same for everyone. So I really do encourage people to forge their own connections to plant spirits. And you know, if you don't even have the plant locally to you, but it is a plant that you really like to use dried and you, you know, you have some in your apothecary, you can still connect with it in that way. And, and baneful plants as well, you might not wish to use them in your workings, but you can still connect to the energy of the plant. And that is something that's really, really profound and powerful. And when you start to actually work with plant spirits in this animist way, rather than seeing them as just herbs that you use in an oil, then it profoundly shifts the way in which you work and it profoundly shifts the magic. And I could not recommend more that you just get into working with the spirits, communing with the spirits directly and actually connect in with them, create a sacred partnership and a bond. And then any plant, even if it is not for that intention, it will be working for you if you have that connection with it. If you already have a partnership to a specific plant spirit, it's going to you know, work so much harder for you than any other plant that you have and you know there are some plants that aren't local to me that I do use in my workings because I feel like I want to use them there I think that they will work really well for me and I connect in and I work with what I have but then there are local herbs as well and really really close plant allies to me which I do you know tend to work with so frequently including mugwort of course and dandelion and garden sage and lavender and nettles and damiana as well. I don't have any damiana growing in my garden but I have just worked with it for a number of years and it is definitely a close plant ally. Cedar is another and cypress etc, oak. So you connect in with your local land, those plant spirit allies will be so so powerful and potent for you to work with. And I would say much more powerful than working with a plant that you know you haven't connected with before that you just have read in a correspondence book that it's gonna work in this way in an oil that you're making or any herbal blend or any spell that you're working for whatever intention you have just because you've read it in a correspondence book it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right herb or plant spirit for you to work with a botanical for you to work with you know so I really encourage you to just go your own way with this and you know if you have a correspondence book sure that's great look into that and then you can learn more and then maybe pick a few of the plants just to create a connection with there are quite a lot of herbs and essential oils in my oils and that's just a choice i make you can create really powerful blends with a lot less ingredients so i would also encourage that it's just the way that i like to work at the moment and i've worked with a lot of these herbs for many years now so it is the way that I like to work but I would really highly encourage you to 
just build your own practice, make it really personal and connect into the spirits of the, the herbs, the botanicals, the plants, the trees, the plant spirit allies essentially. That is my number one tip piece of advice if you are interested in creating this kind of connection and you know communion and work, working space, working relationship yourself. And now once again I'm going to be adding my almond oil, my sweet almond oil. I couldn't find the smaller funnel that I like to use for this so the only one I could find is a slightly larger one and it was the actual size of the top of the bottle so I did get a little bit of spillage hence the muslin at the bottom but I caught most of it and it wasn't too messy so I feel that the love oil is perfect to use straight away for self love workings I also like to use it in glamour workings and for self-confidence mirror work empowering in that kind of very glamour vein and as well as encouraging that self-love and it's really really beautiful for using in my relationship as well so like as a massage oil and I don't tend to strain the herbs out it's not really what I like to do but the protection oil I did let sit for a number of weeks I actually filmed this video about two and a half months ago now so you can see there's still some things that I had on my herbal space before this is a Damiana tincture that I created and it's still kind of marinating. I've since created like a mugwort tincture as well. And these are some tarot cards that are out from a deck that I love. It's the La Flora Tarot and I keep it downstairs. And then there's also a card from the Althea Oracle as well. And I just keep these downstairs because I really like it. I also have my bone set and charm casting set down here as well. And then I have some tinctures that I've created. I have a rose honey elixir, my nettle tincture, which I take every day, and an ashwagandha tincture as well. I've actually started to make one of my own because I use the ashwagandha every day as well. And then I am basically just preparing these salt bowls. So I keep one in the kitchen and at the back of the house and one at the front of the house by the front door. And I like to refill these occasionally but first up, I'm just going to, again, cleanse my space. I'm using like a really gnarly <laughs> bunch of rosemary in the kitchen as well. Like this is kind of down to its last legs. I don't really have a cauldron in the kitchen down here. So I'm just using a plant pot as like a holder for the herbs. And I'm just cleansing out my little pots. These used to be candle holders from the White Company. And over the years, they were Christmassy. And over the years, the silvery stuff kind of came off. So I sort of cleansed them and I just decided I'm going to use them as magical bowls instead, rather than tea lights. I have some other tea light holders now from the White Company, which I really like. So they're very Christmassy. But yeah, I, as you can probably tell, I like to keep a lot of wintry evergreen herbs around the house for a long long time so I have this spruce and I keep this all around the space as a protective element and a sort of home blessing element. I charm these herbs as I bring them into the house around that time of year and I don't get rid of them. Obviously eventually I do compost them so I'm including some pink Himalayan sea salt as well as some regular sea salt in my bowls I'm just pouring them in, obviously setting the intention and spending some time just imbuing my intention into them. So I'm speaking words and blowing on them and pushing my energy into them. So I'm also adding the sea salt, that's the regular Cornish sea salt from the kitchen. And I'm also including some rose petals as well in this mix. So these are just some roses that I decided to hang up. And so I'm just pulling them apart essentially, obviously talking to the plant spirit again and asking it to bless and protect our space. Often rose is used in love workings, I mean rose is pretty much used in most of my workings for self-love and empowerment but I also love to use it in protection magic as well and that is because of the thorns and so I'm literally taking thorns from the stem as well as the leaves from the stem and including those as well into the salt bowl because they are extremely protective. They are kind they kind of have this energy of like a motherly protective energy and it's just so powerful and as a mother myself, you know that that is really really important for me. So again, lavender. Now this is for peace around the home and a sense of sort of friendship and community in our home. When people come into our home, I want them to feel welcome, but I also want them to be people that are bringing love and light and happiness into our home as well so the lavender is for that 
it's also a little bit of an influence because we are going through some challenges with one of my children who is currently being assessed on the ASD spectrum. So that really supports that. And then the bay leaf is for manifestation, of course, and bringing in blessings and bounty and abundance. You know, this is so, it's also calling in the money, you know, so that we, we're supported financially and, you know, that we continue to earn our money in the way we do and that we continue to bring in finances the way that we do so that you know we're we're safe and supported in our home so here are the finished bowls as you can see they look really really pretty but quite quickly the salt does absorb any kind of moisture as well as the negativity and you can sort of tell when they need to be switched out and if I'm honest I don't switch them out frequently enough I am gonna hold my hands up and say that do need to switch them out more frequently but yeah I do it when I can so one's going at the front and one is going at the back this is the front so just placing it at the front next to the broom and I really like the space at the front especially now that we've got the horse show as well and selenite and it kind of just creates that sense of peace in our home as soon as you walk in so it's a different day now and I've set up my space for a little bit of a ritual and meditation I'm going to be working with Lilith for this time and I'm just going to be sharing a little bit of it with you because then I'll be switching my camera off of course. So I'm using my singing bowl just to cleanse myself in the space and I have some Damiana mugwort tea here and again I've been working quite a lot with Lilith for self-love but in a feminine kind of way working in my womb space and the rose is there for that. I feel this connection very deeply between Lilith and Eve and I often feel like Eve is is present for me and I, I feel like the Eve to Lilith, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So this was a really emotional ritual for me and the dog was really, really excited by it. So she did calm down eventually, but just spent some time like checking in and, you know, taking my time. And then I meditated with my mala beads, their rose quartz and clear quartz beautiful mala beads that I got from the witch's box a few years ago. I also have some of my self-love oil right there and I like to use that. One thing I have not yet done is create an oil for Lilith so that's something that I really am keen to do because I do have an oil that I work with the Morrigan with and that has just been an incredibly potent um, ally to have when working with Morrigan. So I'm burning some really really nice frankincense and I am also using my love oil in my burner as well so there are scents coming from the burner with some aromatherapy some essential oils as well as the smoke and I'm basically going to leave it here because this is now where I switched off this was a really emotional meditation for me so I don't think I've ever really been quite so open with sharing some of my ritual processes but know that there are protections behind what you see. There are times when I share things. This was filmed several months ago for a reason. My altar is no longer in this state. So, you know, just to make that clear, So I just wanted to share with you my space a little bit. I will be doing like a walkthrough of the space in a little bit more detail another time. But for now, you can see the oil I created and it just has a quartz on top to charge it with some energy and the love oil is ready to use. The protection oil is going to wait for a little bit though. So going through my apothecary in the other room, my original kind of apothecary where it all built from, I found some really embarrassingly old bottles. So this is like an old cleansing oil that I made like years ago and it smells so, so bad. So it would have been like almond oil, but yeah, you can't even smell the essential oils anymore. It had like lots of citrus and like citronella, that kind of thing. 
but yeah, you cannot even, it's so, so bad. And this is a Florida Watermore I made years and years ago. <laughs> gray. It's like so embarrassing. So I haven't made a Florida water since. This actually doesn't smell that bad, but it's just, that actually smells like I could still use it, but that lime or lemon, I'm not even sure what it is. It looks so old that I do not think. There's no mold on it or anything. Like it's preserved really well. It's just, I'm not even sure how spiritually potent that would be. So I give it a go. I mean, it really doesn't smell bad. You're done, are you? Yeah, Just give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that doesn't smell bad, but it doesn't feel good. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be making it some more Florida water and yeah, I don't know if I'll make any more of this, maybe. Maybe I should, but I've got a few other things I'd like to make, but basically here is my protection oil that I've made and then my love oil. So those are the things I wanted to make today. So they're done. So I'm gonna take this downstairs, I'm gonna rinse out, expose the oil, carefully not down the drain and then i guess i will wash it and then probably put it through the dishwasher as well and then this yeah dispose of it because it smells quite nice but it doesn't feel good like i'm not getting a good vibe from it it's so old and this i used to absolutely love this like this was better than the mass market shop bought florida water that i use so i just never ever got around to making another one but i love this and i have got my recipe somewhere it's not in my formula book of shadows but it's somewhere on a piece of paper somewhere so i've got to dig it out of one of my old books but i will be probably making that probably not today but another time so that is the plan so i really really hope that you've enjoyed seeing my vlog for the weekend i really hope that it served as maybe some inspiration or it's been interesting in some way or helpful or just nice and entertaining to watch or listen to as you go about chores or whatever if you did enjoy the video please do like the video leave me a comment below what do you like to do when you have these kind of reset days when you are pottering around doing house witchcraft practices or herbal practices or path witchcraft i would love to hear from you so leave me a comment below are there any practices here that you also do anything else that you add to it i'd love to hear if you like the video, click the thumbs up button, share, as I said, comment. If you haven't yet subscribed and you're enjoying this content, please do think about subscribing and hit the bell notification as well to receive updates when I create videos just like this. I have an Instagram page where I share everything that I'm up to at the moment. It's more sort of instant in the fact that I can just share things a bit quicker than I can on YouTube. And I have a TikTok as well. I also have a Patreon where I share new and full moon forecasts, including the planetary aspects and what that means for you and how you can work with them as well as shadow work journal prompts and some rituals and practices that you can engage with crystals and herbs that you can work with in your practice as well as a custom made tarot spread that you can work with during that lunation and i'm sharing all that on patreon along with occasional bespoke book of shadows pages with rituals and practices that i have included here on the channel so do click over to join us on patreon we also have a discord server as well and i'm looking forward to doing more things on patreon going forward forward if you'd just like to support me with a one-time donation there is the super thanks below or there is buy me a coffee page or a direct paypal link as well so you can donate there just to say thank you for the content i spend time to create here thank you so much for joining me i hope you really really enjoyed it if you did get to the end of the video please leave me a little cat emoji just because i'm feeling like that and yeah i hope you have a blessed day wherever you are and stay safe and well and i look forward to seeing you again in another video really soon take care so many blessings bye Thank you.